Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Uh, I've been making a few of these videos as subscribers to the channel know, um, looking at filmmaking in general, you know, the C200, this camera right here. And I've actually been getting a lot of questions that I've been trying to answer in the comments, quite a few emails, mainly talking about C200 stuff, but talking about filmmaking stuff as well. And I thought I would answer those questions in this format so that other people can hear the answers as well and maybe find them useful. What we're looking at today is a question I get asked a lot, both in my YouTube life and my, I guess, public, private life, real life, which is, I wanna be a filmmaker, how do I start? This is an awesome question, but it is very difficult to answer for quite a few reasons. One is I think, Filmmaking means different things to different people. Every culture, every country, every you know, community has their own filmmakers and use filmmaking for their own ends. So it makes sense uh, before we ask, we, I try and answer that to kind of dig more into the kind of filmmaker you want to become. Um, I think it's really great to have mentors even if those people don't know that you're their mentoree i think it's really great to and by that i mean filmmakers and artists whose career and work you admire and that you try and emulate um, and kind of mine the same vein that they're that they're mining so th the first thing i say to people that want to become filmmakers is you know go and make a film you know go and try and uh, have the experience of doing the work behind the camera and see how much work and labor goes into producing those images and telling a story. Because I think a lot of people like the idea of filmmaking, just like a lot of people like the idea of being a pro athlete or people like the idea of being a novelist, when you actually get down to it, they don't like that idea as much as the work that goes into it. I really admire um, incredible musicians. I love listening to their music. I know for a fact that I'll never be one. Uh, I just don't have the patience for that kind of practice. I guess the difference with, between filmmaking and music or writing, purely writing like like a, an author, is that the it's almost always a team effort. It's almost always something that involves a lot of gear, a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of coordination. And you have to have sort of an eye and a head for the logistics of it. You have to be a people person um, or at least be able to get what you want from people in a way that makes them want to be able to do that for you again and again. So I tell people who want to be filmmakers, uh, who aspire to being filmmakers, just go out and make a film. Everyone has a camera. Every, almost everyone has a computer. They're, they're part of our everyday lives now. So my advice would be make a film, but make a small one, make a, a really simple, achievable, smaller than you even think is small film. Um, it can just be one simple thought or, you know, go out and, you know, find a scene from your favorite film or find a scene from a film that you admire and recreate it with your friends, shoot it on your iPhone, edit it on your laptop, and then see the amount of time and the amount of effort that goes into getting what it is that you want to represent. I would say, from my experience, I would say about 80 or 90% of the people that attempt this never, never, never go further than this. It's a great experience for them, but when they realize how many hours go into every minute of film and how much concentration and discipline and patience that takes, they immediately, they think, oh, well, that was, I love film, but I love film as a non-filmmaker. And that's really natural. It's nice to have creative control. It's nice to be in charge, but that comes with just this huge weight of responsibility um, and all these other things that you have to do that as an actor, you're just, you know, you learn your lines, you get on set, you do your piece of the puzzle and then you leave. And the director for a year before and a year afterwards is putting all those pieces of the puzzle into something that uh, that can tell a story, which is a very difficult, personal, complicated experience that there's no map for. I do think some people, and I do think 
the tendency is to go big and think, well, I'm already spending, I'm already spending this money and I'm already asking these favors. Why don't I make something that will really show the world, uh, what I can do? And that's great. But, um, if you don't understand what the process is and if you enjoy that process, then you can bite off more than you can chew and kind of like get stuck halfway and ne the film will never see the light of day. The get your hands dirty, start small, and then get feedback on your idea. Once you've finished the film that you like uh, and you think it makes sense, the chances are this being your first time doing it, it won't make sense to many other people. And it really takes a, a humble and um, mature person to see that a lot of the work that they've done was for nothing and they have to take advice from people who uh, around them that they trust and go back and do even more work to get the film to make sense. I remember the first Nintendo commercial that I directed. It was a two day shoot and I think I did 84 separate edits, which was, you know, on one level, a huge waste of my time. On another level, incredible education and an incredible experience in refining something um, to the point where it seems really natural, but the path to that that effortless um, sort of simplicity is anything but simple. I would also advise people to work on other people's films, which you know you, at least you get to see how other um, filmmakers do what they do. It also has the advantage of letting you learn different parts of the filmmaking process. We have this great medium now uh, of the web where we can share the work that we make and get feedback on it and more and probably more importantly encouragement on it um, from around the world because I think everyone who's made a film knows the like total the, the one of the biggest struggles isn't financial or technical it's it's a struggle of energy and once you put your heart and soul into something and it's not it's not what you wanted it to be just because that's reality but it's also not something that can get appreciated um, that it's so critical for people to kind of weigh in and encourage one another and say hey I, I really like this you know <laughs> I, I got something out of this and I mean YouTube has been amazing for that um, for me you know I got so many so much great feedback on um, Science City which was the big uh, web series I did that it really transformed my idea of what my work was and how I wanted to share it and who I wanted to share it with. The internet is, is a really good thing. It means that far more um, stuff is out there and can be seen. And so there's much more competition, but it also means that you can connect to people who like what you do. You're no longer captive to the Hollywood tastemakers. Um, you're able to build a community around the work that you love to do and find collaborators. So in summary, if you want to be a filmmaker, I would get your hands dirty, make a film, but start small and achievable, then go back and refine the work that you do and get it out into the audience. And don't be afraid to take criticism and comments and encouragement from other people like you. After you've done that process, you'll have a pretty good idea if, you know, the kind of grind, the kind of, um, the the intensity and the mundanity of filmmaking is for you. If it's something that suits your personality, if it's something that that really, you know, gives you a buzz, you know, makes you feel alive and makes you feel like this is something you could do, um, then choose a bigger project, branch out, but slowly and surely expand the work that you do um, and find something that that means something to you, something that makes you feel good to make, something that um, it doesn't need to save the world yet, it doesn't need to have a huge audience. It just, you need to put some part of yourself into it. It needs to mean something to you and you need to get something out of the process. You can't just always give to your art. You have to take back as well. It has to nourish you in a real sense. It has to be, it's a two-way relationship. Your, your art and your craft have to be um, a good friend because you're gonna be doing what you do, hopefully your whole life. That's my advice for getting started in filmmaking. Um, hopefully someone got something out of it out there. I would love to hear what advice people out there have for people starting filmmaking in the comments. I will see you next time.